First, we look at the level of self-esteem. In other words, to what extent does the person believe they have value or worth? So a high score in level would mean that a person uh, considers themselves to be important and to be worthy and to be valued uh, by their uh, employer and others around them. The second variable is the source. In other words, where did the individual get their self-esteem? There are two possibilities. One is that they received their self-esteem based on how well they perform. In other words, if they perform well, people tell them they're important, they feel important, but when they perform poorly, they do not feel as valued or important. And this uh, esteem that is, uh, that is given to individuals or they perceive that uh, it comes from an outside source could come from a parent or a boss or some other person that the individual values their opinion. If an individual is low on uh, this source, then that means that the individual uh, has established his or her self-esteem on some factor other than performance, which could be something like uh, identity. So some people establish their self-esteem on the basis of their performance or what they do. Some people establish their self-esteem on the basis of their identity or who they are. Well, let's look at some considerations you as the leader should take into account given the answers that your follower gave to these self-esteem questions. First, the level. Individuals who have a low self-esteem will have difficulty being inspired. So transactional leadership is most likely the only way to obtain the desired behavior. High self-esteem individuals, on the other hand, can be easily inspired and generally deal well with constructive feedback. Regarding the source of self-esteem, individuals who derive their self-esteem from their performance will be more likely to respond to the value associated with the outcome of performing the expected task. Thus, the third question of the EIV model becomes very important to individuals who uh, receive their, um, their self-esteem from their performance. Okay, we've been looking at four characteristics of the individual that once you as the leader know the level uh, of the score on these variables, it gives you some uh, additional guidance than, that you would have had if you did not know those about how to approach your individual follower and their desired level of performance. Next, let's look at the variables that you receive that are related to the three factors that influence behavior and associated outcomes from our behavioral model. Okay. First, you'll receive a score designating the individual's perception that they have the score, the skill necessary to accomplish the task successfully that you've given them. In other words, higher scores on skill mean that the employee believes he or she has the necessary skills to perform well at the assigned task. When skill has a low score, a possible leader intervention would include task-specific training and or education. Instructional feedback, especially if the individual values feedback for instructional purposes or the individual has noted in their feedback characteristics that they welcome uh, feedback from others in order to perform better. And lastly, uh, the opportunity for experience through trial and error. In other words, a low score on skill would signal to you, the leader, that you must take one or more of these actions in order to increase or enhance the skill level necessary for the behavior and its associated outcome. Next, we look at the situation factor. Higher scores on this variable mean that the employee believes there exist factors in his or her environment that are in the way or inhibit their successful accomplishment of the expected task. Now we don't know from the survey exactly which, what these factors are or which parts of their situation are uh, in their way. So this is open to probing by you as the leader uh, with the follower to determine exactly what 
uh, aspects of the follower situation or the problem. So some possible leader interventions includes providing more or better resources, such as equipment or more time to do the task. Eliminate restrictive policies that might be uh, in the way of the employee actually uh, putting forth uh, better behavior or, or behaviors that would help produce better outcomes. Breaking the goal down into smaller goals. This is quite often it's called a small step approach, but maybe the goal is too broad. Maybe the individual needs to see this goal broken down into three or four smaller goals so that the focus is more proximal or near to them or closer to them, more elemental to them, and that they can accomplish uh, the smaller steps in order to accomplish the bigger or the original goal. Lastly, there's a motivation score. Higher scores here mean that the employee believes that he or she is putting forth sufficient effort to accomplish the task. For lower scores, we would then want to consider the EIV model to determine which of the three questions the individual may be struggling to answer yes. Remember, for the individual to put forth full effort toward a behavior and its associated outcome, they must answer all three questions of the behavioral model of the EIV model with a yes. So the next thing we would want to do is examine the scores that you receive back on the variables that uh, were designed to tell you how the individual might be answering the three questions of the EIV model. The first dimension of the EIV model is expectancy. In other words, to what degree does the employee believe that if they put forth the effort, they will in fact uh, perform? Higher scores on expectancy mean that the employee believes that he or she is putting forth sufficient effort to accomplish the task. However, for lower scores, the employee needs greater efficacy related to some task or some aspect of the goal. This means their past experiences may inform them they are not capable or it's new to them and they are unsure of the outcome of their effort. Particularly, this is troublesome for individuals who are low on tolerance for ambiguity. Also for lower scores, overcoming past experiences of failure or novel situations may require the leader to model successful ways to accomplish the task or have a fellow employee model these but so the employee can see what success looks like and making it safe for the employee to try and fail without severe consequences. Efficacy is also developed through encouragement from the leader. The second factor of the EIV model is instrumentality. Instrumentality represents the question, what will I get even if I perform successfully? Higher scores on instrumentality mean that the employee believes that he or she actually accomplishes what is expected. Then he or she will receive the outcome they desire. The problem comes in if the score is lower on instrumentality. The employee then believes that he or she will not get what is deserved, even if they are successful for some reason, or that they are uncertain of what they will receive even if he or she does what's expected. Therefore, for lower scores, specific goals and frequent feedback are helpful in eliminating uncertainty. If the employee perceives the leader or organization to be unfair or incapable of rewarding employees that do a good job, then the leader needs to probe the source of these concerns. The leader may be dealing with employee's sense of favoritism or outgroup factors. Outgroup factors being uh, those associated with the fact that individuals within a group tend to feel in-group or out-group. When individuals feel like they are not a part of the in-group or are a part of the out-group, then they believe they are, are less likely to be dealt with fairly by the leadership. So the leader should probe these factors that can work against an individual believing that they will in fact get what they deserve. 